simply because I belong to a people, an old people, that has given to the world not so many answers, but so many wonders and questions. The very first question in the, in the Bible is when God turns to Adam and asks him, Ayeka, could Adam ran away from God? He was hiding. And God says, where are you? The very great master, the very first Yubavitch of Mount Rabbi, when he was in jail, the warden, who was a biblical scholar, asked him, is it possible, master, that God didn't know what Adam was? And the answer is, God, you, Adam, did not. So where are we in the world? We as Jews cannot, but we have a kind of metaphysical connection to each other. It is more than psychology, it is more than social endeavors. It goes beyond, always beyond. What are we doing here in this world as Jews? Surrounded by so many others, some of them of course respected, others not. And we realize that the questions that we had 3,000 years ago are still valid today. How is it possible that the Jewish people, the only people to have survived antiquity, is still present? Not only in Israel, of course, Israel is at the heart of our dreams, of our aspirations, of our quest for humanity in ourselves. And we hear that once again a Jewish community is being threatened with extinction by a leader of his nation, Ahmadinejad. And that in Israel itself, rockets are coming again and again in the hundreds. How can one not ask the question, how long can this go on? Will it ever end? I remember years ago, I was invited to address the General Assembly of the United Nations. And I entitled my lecture, Will the World Ever Learn? And the answer, it will not because it doesn't. Otherwise, how is one to explain not only children what you mentioned, the massacres in, 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 in Bosnia, but Rwanda and Cambodia and still racism in some places and discrimination in others. How is it possible that anti-Semitism should still be around? If Auschwitz did not cure the world of anti-Semitism, what will and what can? After all, it's true. Auschwitz was not only consequence, the result of anti-Semitism alone, there were other elements, economic, political, but one thing is absolutely certain, without anti-Semitism there would have been no options. So how is it possible that it's still here in so many places? If Hamas, the Jews are being killed, other places humiliated, in Hungary, once more victimized, and we do not see, we hear no great voices of protest saying, hey, stop it, just stop it. I don't have the answers, but my questions are good. And then I say to myself that maybe we are here after all as witnesses. We are, Prophet Isaiah said, that God said to the Jewish people, you a dim a temple of Hashem, you are my witnesses. But the Talmud 
says, continuing the thought, God said, if you are my witnesses, I am God. If you are not, I am not. You bury God himself, putting his divinity, his eternity, his all power, magnitude in our hands. It depends on us whether God is God. But of course, what he really needs to tell us, the prophet Isaiah, is that we bear witness to what is happening, not only to us, but all people around us. You mentioned, Sherman, the museum. We had, I remember, I was almost the founder. By all people, I was appointed by President Carter. He didn't know really in the beginning what we were going to do with it. We had so many discussions. Who should we remember? And then how should we remember? I came up with a formula. That tragedy is, of course, quintessentially a Jewish tragedy. But it has universal applications. Oh yes, there were other people who were killed, but not exterminated like the Jewish people. But nevertheless, it is only the Jew that obsessed Hitler. Can you imagine when you think about it, the 1944, where the Hungarian Jews, at their turn, came to be deported. Germany was losing the war. A few days before D-Day, they already lost in Italy, in, in the Balkans. And for them, it was more important to send a German soldier to kill Jews than to go to the front. Now, what kind of stupidity was there? To the very end, the priority for Hitler was to kill Jews. I read every single book that comes out on that subject in any language available to me. I try to understand, I still know one day I'll understand. I don't understand the murderers. I don't, maybe I don't understand evil. I don't understand such hatred. In Hitler's testament, which he wrote a few hours literally before committing suicide, still the Jews, only the Jews, his armies were defeated, and he believes that we did it. Now, think it over, I believe, of course, that in history, nothing is coincidental. try to do to us. First, to take us from the continent and put us in one place. And that place then became a city, the city became a street, the street became a house, the house became a cellar, and in the cellar there were gas chambers and flames. Didn't it happen to Hitler as well? In the beginning, he had an empire. It shrank to a country. It shrank to a city. The city became a bunker. The bunker became a room. And how did he die in flames? Is it vengeance? I don't believe in vengeance. Vengeance of destiny. The world is too weak. It's a question. Why did it happen? I had a friend who was a very, very old religious Jew. Old at that time. To me, he was probably 40. He was old. <laughs> and he would always, at one point, very from, he would turn to heaven and say, Master of the universe. 